everybody! I got a request from someone to review the Bilingua app, Bilingua app, and uh, I just downloaded it. It is the first time I'm opening it, and it looks really cool. Here we are. All that I've done is I've selected my language. So once you've logged in and uh, chosen a language, it gives you a list of books you can read. So this works with audiobooks. I've chosen Chinese because I want to practice my Chinese. So let's take a look. All right, I've got a list of ebooks here, or audiobooks rather. And I think there was one that looked interesting to me. So let me open it up. This Antarctica one. So it seems they have different categories and topics. Great, my first text is downloaded. When paused, the sentence playing will always be highlighted. Click on it again to hear it. Okay, let's take a look. Click on switch text to change the text to the other language in the back. Okay. Cool. Hmm. It's quite soft. All right, it appears the volume is quite soft. So perhaps using earphones with, with this would be great. I wonder if they show pinyin. What does this do? Okay. Speed glossary text size night mode. That's nice, definitely. Glossary is empty, so select text and add it to the glossary. So I think a, a limitation with this would be if you don't know enough of Chinese, you would not know uh, where the word stops. Yeah, so anyway, I, I know that this is Antarctica. There's these first three, so I'll add it to my glossary. Let's see what my glossary looks like. This is your glossary, okay. How do I access my glossary again? More. Okay, so you can purchase a pack, library, and my stories. Okay, so I can see the story I'm reading right now. Uh, where do I find my glossary? Okay, so it's evident here we can change between seeing only Chinese and seeing both English and Chinese, which is really cool. I'm just trying to find my glossary again. Ooh, this is cool. So you can choose how much of the text you want it to read to you. That's excellent. So you can change the speed. That's very interesting. I'm still trying to find my glossary. Am I blind? Now I will go back to the library and up here I can change my language. So you can select up to two languages. So I'm gonna select Korean. Okay, level. Let's just say beginner. Categories. Cool. I like culture and science. Oh, I can select one. Okay, culture it is. Um, I think this is the filter for the translation language. So let's see if I put it on Korean, if the text inside will be Korean and Chinese. China oh, okay. So you can select the reference language. So let's see. Korean and Chinese. Oh my goodness, this is excellent. Wow. This is a great app for polygots then. Wow. Okay, this one has... Oh, stop. <laughs> this one has better audio, uh, louder volume than the other one. That is so cool. This is really excellent. I wonder if it'll read it in Korean for me as well. No. Ah, so my glossary is there. I must have missed it the whole time. So let's open my other book and see if I've got that word in my glossary. How embarrassing. I ah, hear it is. Ah, there we go. Okay, but it doesn't tell me what it is, does it? Oh, what is this? Pleco. That's cool. So you can... Translate it with the apps that you have on your phone already. Nanji is the South Pole. Nanji. Cool. All right, so you can add a note and then you can tell yourself it's Antarctica. Antarctica. 
And then let's open my glossary again. Where do I see the notes? Hmm. And it seems that there's quite a good variety. Some of it is children's stories, there's culture, science, technology. But the only thing I haven't seen so far is now I've chosen Chinese right at the beginning of the app. And I want to see if I can... All right, here you can change it. So let's say I want to improve my Korean. And I want my reference language to be English. Uh, let me try that. Fantastic. So it changes immediately to Korean. And choose Korean to English. The voice is a little hard to understand if you're a beginner user, but it appears to me that the voice is different in all the stories. And obviously, Korean sentence structure is not the same as English sentence structure. So it's a little misleading that the English kind of carries on at the same time as the Korean. I just wish that there would be some way that you could translate single words. So if you add something to the glossary, it doesn't translate it for you. Unless I'm missing something. But then I guess it's up to you as the user to figure out if you select the sentence to figure out which words match with which. Let's see if we open the three little pigs in Korean. Oh, I have to purchase it. That's interesting, so it's good to know that not everything is free here. What does this bee do? Oh, okay, so that's where you can purchase it. Not right now. Okay, so this is an extremely honest, um, haphazard little review I did. I've never used this app before. Obviously, I may have missed a few things, but overall, I'd give it about four out of five, three and a half out of five. I think the content um, variety can be improved, so I do hope that they add a lot more in the future, because then I definitely want to read it. And maybe some function to translate individual words, or when you add it to your glossary, that it'll, it'll give you a definition of the word. That would be great as well. But for now, it seems like it's good for intermediate to advanced learners. And my favorite feature of this app is that you can choose a base language and choose the language you want to learn. So if you're a polyglot practicing two languages, it would be fabulous to do like what I did and choose Korean and Chinese together. So I suggest you try this app out and if you have any tips on how to use this app, please let me know because I may have missed something. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye! Thank you.